G'day guys, I'm Wasup52 and this is a how-to video on making your own ponyfied medieval buckler shield. Now for those of you who already know, I'm going to be selling items at PonyCon EU. This will be one of them, but for now I'll just show you how to make your own. First of all, you're going to need a plank of wood. You can pick these up easily at Bunnings, your local hardware, or any wood craftsman. Now for choices you could go with plywood, pine, MDF, jarra, whatever takes your fancy. But for me, I chose MDF simply because it's hardy and easy to work with. Next, you'll need a cardboard outcut so you can easily make your circles on your plank of wood. To get your cardboard outcut, you'll need a bucket so you can get that perfect circle. When you're ready to cut your shield to shape, you can either use a handsaw and then use sandpaper to get that nice circular shape, but it does take time. Or you could use a jigsaw, or you could use a bandsaw. If you don't have this fancy machinery available to you, you can always join your local's men's shed. The next step I took was using a lathe. Again, if you don't have this kind of machinery available to you immediately, you can always ask your local men's shed or go and ask friends and family that are savvy with woodwork. Now basically the lathe has an adapter so you can hook onto the back and put two screws in, then attach it to the lathe and have it spinning at a very fast rate and using a special chisel to get this nice angle, which is also called a chamfered edge. I chose this way just because it makes, makes it that little bit more fancy and makes it very useful for getting rid of any accidentally uh, too much cut bits of wood into this so you get that nice perfect circular shape. You could always use a router but I find that using the lathe just makes it that little bit more easier and perfect to get rid of any imperfections. You don't have to make a chamfered edge, but if you want to make it that little bit more fancy, this is a good way of doing it. Next, get your cardboard cutout, find the centre of your cardboard cutout, put a hole in the middle, get a pencil, mark the centre of your shield, then use a ruler to make a line across your shield. This will be used for when you attach your handle to your shield. And then put your handle roughly in the middle, make a couple more lines as to where you'll be boring the holes to screw in your handle onto your shield and then you're ready for the next step. Next step is drilling the holes for your handle. Now if you've got a good steady hand you can go with an electric hand drill or if you wish a drill press. Now this one set me back around about two hundred dollars but you can find cheap ones but let me just say this you do get what you pay for and using a drill press keeps a good level of standard when it comes to boring the holes for your handle. After you drilled your holes for your handle, you want to get a countersinking tool and countersink both sides of your shield. Next, you need to grab a countersunk bolt. And since I'm using 16 millimeters of MDF, you'll need to get, say, 25 millimeters of bolt. Give it enough to play around with. After that, put the bolt in the front. Drill it in most of the way. On the other side, you'll need to grab the nut that comes with the bolts. This just gives it that added strength. It's very easy to use. And relatively simple. And drill it in while you're holding the nut. Just enough so that it catches on tightly, so then it's firm and won't come undone so easily. Also, make sure that your drill bit is relatively the same size as your countersunk bolt. Because once you've drilled your hole, you want your countersunk bolt to thread onto the shield itself so then it's not as loose and it won't come undone as easily. Next, you'll need some wood putty to cover up your bolts on the front of your shield and to fill in the holes at the back. When using wood putty, you need to be quite generous because even though you think you may have too much over the front, say, what I'm doing now, you may think, oh, that's a bit too much, but really, you're saving yourself a whole lot of hassle because if you try to make it like dead flat right now it would just be a pain and it would spread out over the hole and wouldn't fill out properly. So be generous with the putty that you're putting on on the front and also on the back just squish it in with your fingers or the spatula to make sure that the holes are filled in and so you won't have any problems later on. 
Now once you've finished applying the wood putty, just leave it to sit for about two hours, as it says on the packet, but I'd say for good measure, just leave it overnight to dry off completely, so when it comes to sanding back the wood putty, you won't have any issues. Once your wood putty is dried off, get some very coarse sandpaper, and then start sanding back the wood putty. So then when it gets to reasonably flat, then get some finer sandpaper, and make sure that it's all completely flat and in line with the shield. Then it should look so something like this. Nice and flat and smooth, and once you've painted over that, you won't be able to notice it at all. After that, you want to put on some oil-based primer seal or an undercoat. This makes it really good for waterproofing your shield, and particularly if you're using MDF, which is pretty much sawdust and glue, if you get it wet with water, it will just start flaking off and becoming real messy, so you really don't want that to happen. Put on two coats of oil-based sealer, and that should be fine. After that, you can put on two coats of whatever color paint you want. Now, I'm choosing semi-gloss, and but you can choose full-on gloss or satin, but I'd say semi-gloss because it's not too shiny and it's not too dull either. Now for my prototype, I used a paintbrush to apply my paint, and that's easy to use, you can get it around those hard corners, but I found that it left a lot of streaks. And by having those streaks, it doesn't make it easy for me to apply my commercial grade vinyl sticker. And you can use a paintbrush if you wish, but I believe I'll be using a paint spray gun so I can get a nice even surface so I won't have anything to fuss about. Now when it comes to choosing the paint you want, I find going to Bunnings is really helpful because they can make it for you on the spot and give you a whole range of different colours through their example booklet of pretty much any colour that you can think of to suit your needs and you can either ask for it in satin, semi-gloss or full-on gloss. Now when it comes to decals, you can put on paint or use a commercial grade vinyl sticker like I have or which other method you feel suits best. Now if you go with the vinyl sticker option, I went to a good friend of mine who owns a graphics design business who used a vinyl printing machine. He printed it, cut it to shape, but then you'll tend to know sometimes the edges of the sticker tend to peel upwards, so you want to make sure that's all flat and then get a clear gloss spray can, put two coats on, wait for that to dry, and then there you have it, your very own ponyfied medieval buckler shield. Ready to use however you see fit. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm What's Up 52 and I'll catch you next time.